Hello, my name is Amin Emad from McGill University, and today I will be talking about tissue-guided lasso for prediction of clinical drug response using preclinical samples in cancer. This project that has been recently published in PLOS Computational Biology was a collaboration between my lab at McGill and the lab of Dr. Sinha at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. One of the major questions in precision cancer medicine is predicting whether a patient is sensitive or resistant to a specific drug using their molecular and clinical profiles. Machine learning provides us with the tools to perform this task. And ideally, we would like to train a machine learning model on data corresponding to real tumors. However, in practice, the number of samples with known clinical drug response is quite small, even in large databases such as TCGA, making it impossible to train accurate machine learning models on clinical samples for the majority of the drugs. This is even a bigger problem for newly approved drugs. Alternatively, we decided to focus uh, on a more computationally difficult task of developing a preclinical to clinical machine learning model. In this model, the algorithm will be trained only on preclinical cancer cell lines, but then is used to predict the drug response of real tumors. The training set in our approach included gene expression and drug response in the form of continuous valued IC50 of approximately 800 cancer cell lines from different lineages from the GDSC database. In addition, we identified 12 drugs that were shared between GDSC and TCGA, such that they had enough number of patients labeled data in TCGA that we could use for evaluation of different methods. Uh, I would like to emphasize that this is a very difficult computational task, much more difficult than say, uh, predicting the drug response of cancer cell lines using models trained on other cancer cell lines. The reason is that there are major biological and clinical differences uh, between the training and the test set, in other words, between the cancer cell lines and real tumors. In other words, cancer cell lines are not the best models of cancer since they cannot capture, the, for example, the heterogeneity of cancer cells in a tumor, or they cannot capture the effect of tumor's microenvironment, which is a very important factor, and various other differences. In our project, we first developed a computational workflow in which we first remove the discrepancy between the gene expression profiles of cancer cell lines and tumors. Then we train a regression model. And finally, we use the trained model on the gene expression profile of tumors to predict their drug response. By comparing the predicted drug response with known clinical drug response of the tumors, then we would be able to assess the performance of different methods. After comparing and, uh, the performance of many different methods, some of which are shown in this table, we observe that linear models tend to work better than other methods. This is something that uh, previous studies had also observed. But even the best performing model, say a uh, single task lasso, could only differentiate between resistant and sensitive samples for less than half of the drugs. And this suggested that more accurate modeling of the biology of the problem may be needed uh, in order to improve the performance. One way uh, to improve the modeling is to incorporate information on the tissue type and cancer types of the training and test samples. This is particularly important since the mechanism of action of drugs is tissue dependent. Uh, we tried common approaches for including information on the tissue of origin. For example, uh, we tried including extra binary features corresponding to tissues of origin of samples, or tried using only training samples corresponding to the test samples uh, tissue of origin. But none of these could improve the performance of uh, the best performing algorithm in the previous table. We argued that we need a method that can take advantage of all the training samples, but does this in a way that respects the tissue type of each test sample. 
we can think of this as some kind of tissue domain adaptation. Suppose we want to predict the drug response of tumors uh, with tissue T. And to do this, we decided to bring the tissue information uh, of cell lines in the hyperparameter tuning step of the lasso algorithm and find the hyperparameter that enables the cell lines from uh, tissues other than T to best predict the drug response of cell lines from tissue T. In other words, we put all the cell line uh, samples of tissue T in the validation set and the cell lines of other tissues in the training set. And after, but after we find the best hyperparameter, we train the model on all the cell lines. And then we repeat this process for each tissue T. It turned out that this method could achieve what no other method could, and it improved the performance of LASSO, enabling differentiation of sensitive and resistant patients for seven drugs. Here, you can see the distribution of predicted IC50 values uh, for resistant and sensitive patients for these seven drugs. Here you can, uh, uh, so next we ask, how can we turn this regression model into a useful predictor that can identify high confidence resistant and high confidence uh, sensitive patients and a third group of low confidence predictions that uh, we may not, we may basically call them, uh, we don't know. For this purpose, we use the distribution of IC50 values of our training samples, and for each drug, identify the thresholds that determine the top K percent and bottom K percent uh, of the IC50 values. Then patients with predicted IC50 values above the top K percent threshold would be high confident resistant. The ones below the bottom K percent threshold would be uh, high confidence sensitive, and the ones between these two will be low confidence predictions. And it turned out that if we use k equals to 20, we can get a precision of 100% for five of these drugs using TG Lasso. And even with k equals to 40, we can get a precision of 80% or better. Of course, there is still a lot more work to be done, and we are working on a deep learning approach to formalize this tissue domain adaptation idea. If you're interested, please take a look at the paper published in PLOS Computational Biology, the reference is here, uh, or, uh, and uh, contact me uh, through email and I would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, time and thank you for listening.